If you've ever used the internet, whether to send an email, stream a movie, or just Google something, you've relied on network protocols. These are the invisible rules that allow devices to talk to each other. So what's a network protocol? A network protocol basically is a standardized set of rules that define how data is formatted, transmitted, and processed across a network. Protocols operate across layers of the OSI and TCP IP models from physical transmission up to the application level communication. So without these protocols, devices wouldn't know when to send data, how to identify each other, or even how to recover from errors. Let's start with the backbone of everything. TCP IP. This protocol suite underpins the entire internet. TCP or the Transmission Control Protocol operates at layer 4 of the OSI model and ensures reliable ordered delivery of data between devices. It establishes a connection using a three-way handshake. If you remember this from your CCNA, if you've done CCNA, the scene, scene arc and the arc and guarantees that packets arrive in sequence. It also implements flow control and congestion control, making it ideal for web browsing, email, and file transfers. IP, or the Internet Protocol, operates at layer 3 and handles addressing and routing. IP is connectionless and doesn't guarantee delivery since that's TCP's job. All it does is just get the packet from the source to the destination using IP addresses or internet protocol addresses and routing tables. So here's an example. Let's say you're sending a picture to a friend via WhatsApp. That image is broken into chunks or packets by TCP. Then IP takes those packets and finds the best route to your friend's phone. TCP ensures that these packets are reassembled correctly when they arrive at the destination. Next up is HTTP or the Hypertext Transfer Protocol. So HTTP is stateless and works over TCP port 80. And it's used by browsers and APIs to request and transmit data, mainly HTML, images, and other web content. HTTPS is HTTP layered on top of Transport Layer Security or TLS. So usually over port 443, remember HTTP port 80, HTTPS, or the secure version of HTTP port 443. TLS encrypts the data exchange between the client and the server. HTTPS also ensures authentication and data integrity using digital certificates. Next up is DNS, or the domain name system. You open your browser and type in example.com, but your computer doesn't understand names, right? It understands IP addresses. DNS or the domain name system resolves human readable domain names to IP addresses. So DNS basically just resolves these names, for example, example.com <laughs> to their IP addresses. DNS uses a hierarchical structure starting with the root servers at the top, TLD servers like .com, and authoritative name servers. DNS queries often involve recursion and caching to reduce latency. The protocol works primarily over UDP port 53, but falls back to TCP when necessary. For example, during zone transfers. Sending of email relies on SMTP, the simple mail transfer protocol. SMTP is responsible for transferring email between mail servers and from clients to servers. It operates over TCP port 25 and port 587 with encryption. Basically, SMTP is push-based, so it can only send email and not receive it. The next two protocols, TOP3 and IMAP, receive email from a mail server to a client. So let's start with POP3. POP3 or the Post Office Protocol version 3 downloads email to the client and usually deletes the emails from the server. It operates over TCP port 110 or TCP port 995 with SSL. 
IMAP or the Internet Message Access Protocol keeps email on the server and syncs across devices. IMAP runs on TCP port 143 or 993 for SSL. So nowadays you're most likely to see IMAP being implemented as opposed to POP3 based on the advantages we've just seen. FTP or the file transfer protocol is used to transfer files between a client and server and works over TCP port 20 and 21. Active and passive modes determine how the data connection is established. In active mode, the server initiates the data connection to the client. In passive mode, the client initiates both control and data connections, and this works best with firewalls. Next up is SSH or Secure Shell. So SSH basically provides encrypted remote access to network devices and servers. It operates over TCP port 22 and uses public key cryptography for authentication. Next up is UDP or the User Datagram Protocol. UDP is a connectionless, lightweight transport layer protocol. So when you're comparing UDP to TCP, basically UDP is usually much more faster than TCP. Remember TCP is connection oriented, right? Scene, scene arc, and the arc, right? But UDP is connectionless and faster. And this means that UDP can be used for real-time services where speed is critical. For example, VoIP, DNS, or video streaming. UDP doesn't guarantee delivery, order of packets, or error correction. Next up is ICMP or the Internet Control Message Protocol. ICMP is used for diagnostics and error reporting. It's encapsulated in IP packets and has no port numbers. You've probably used ping before, right? Whenever you have connection issues and you want to check whether the internet is up or the service you're connecting to is up, you've probably done ping 8.8.8 .8 .8 to check whether your internet connection is okay. Basically, that's ICMP echo request and echo reply in action. If a router can't forward a packet for one reason or another, it might send an ICMP destination unreachable message back to the sender. Next up is ARP. ARP is the address resolution protocol and it maps IPv4 addresses to MAC addresses in a LAN. ARP works at layer 2 and broadcasts request to find the hardware address corresponding to a given IP. The mapping is usually cached locally for future use. So in other words, we're just asking in the network, can the owner of this IP address respond back with your MAC address? Next up is Telnet. And Telnet basically provides bidirectional text-based communication with remote devices. Telnet runs over TCP port 23 and sends data, including passwords, in plain text. So nowadays it's mostly obsolete and it's recommended that you use SSH instead of Telnet. SNMP, or the Simple Network Management Protocol, is used for monitoring and managing network devices. Imagine a central dashboard polling routers, switches, and servers for CPU usage, uptime, and errors. SNMP works over UDP port 161 for the queries and UDP port 162 for the traps. The last one is NTP or the network time protocol. NTP synchronizes clocks across network devices. So let's say your firewall, server, and clients log an event, but their clocks are out of sync. NTP fixes this by using authoritative time servers to synchronize device clocks across devices in your network. NTP runs over UDP port 123. That's it. I hope you learned something new. And as we've seen, the internet as you know it only works because of these silent rules. So the next time you hit enter in your browser, remember there are different protocols working behind the scenes to make that click happen.